power of the heart, finding your inner wisdom. The power, the power of, of the heart. heart, finding the power of the heart. Power of the heart. The power. Power of the heart. Power of the heart. Let us discover new power. The power of the heart. Thank you for joining us today. You are tuning in to the Power of the Heart on Da Ai Radio. My name is Yu Ru, and recently on BBC Asia News, I have read that Ziji is being described as Taiwan's New Age Buddhists. Let me read to you what they wrote: Sorting through a large pile of used clothes and household items, Xiao Shou Zhu is the picture of a New Age Buddhist. The 63-year-old retiree used to practice her religion by praying at temples, but now she volunteers seven days a week at a recycling center to raise funds for Taiwan's Buddhist association called Ziji. She said, "I have no time to go to temples. Praying is not as important. Coming here every day is like praying," says Miss Xiao. This is not how most people practice Buddhism in Chinese-speaking or even non-Chinese-speaking Buddhist societies. Their faith is usually self-focused, praying for protection in their current life and to be born into a better life after they die. But Taiwan is leading a quiet and yet powerful movement that has turned traditional Buddhism on its head, converting many Buddhists. Such as Michelle into doers, not just believer. Burning paper money and incense is discouraged. It is bad for the environment. Going to temple is low priority. Even praying too much is frowned upon. The focus now is on what the Taiwanese call humanistic Buddhism, caring for others and for society. It returns Buddhists to the core principles of Buddhism. Speaking good words, thinking good thoughts, and doing good deeds. Ziji Foundation, which is at the vanguard of the moment, volunteers in Taiwan are seen everywhere in their trademark blue shirts and white trousers. They recycle plastic bottles to raise charity funds, check on elderly people living alone, providing support to poor and at-risk families, tutor children, and help respond to natural disasters. What makes Taiwanese Buddhism unique is its strong emphasis on helping society. Ziji, for example, has provided post-disaster relief in more than 84 countries, including in the Philippines, where it recently paid 50,000 households to rebuild their home destroyed by Typhoon Haiyan. Dian Dongyuan, a Ziji spokesman, said, "From the beginning." Buddha taught people to help those who are suffering, without conditions, and not to want anything in return. Taiwan is also helping mainland China recovering the religion. Although Buddhism has nearly 2,000 years of history in China, it has diminished in importance in recent centuries because of war, political turmoil, and suppression, and a focus on modernization. Millions of Chinese listen to Taiwanese Dharma Masters teaching on DVD or MP3s. They download material from website and spread them online. Back at the Taipei Recycling Center, more bags of used clothes arrive for Miss Xiao to sort. She said putting Buddhism's teaching to practice has given her the strength to cope with her mother's sudden death and help her improve her relationships with her children. It opens up the knot in my heart," Miss Shaw said. Her advice to other Buddhists: Don't just believe in Buddhism; do something to help others. That is what BBC Asia News recently reported about Ziji and its Buddhism practice. Next is a reading of the Law of Karma by Emily Polivka from a collection of Dharma Master Zheng Yan's teachings. After a short break. We'll discuss this teaching with Emily to explore Dharma Master Zheng Yan's wisdom. In our program, you'll also hear from people around the world about their favorite Jing Si aphorisms.
Hello, everyone. My name is Emily Polivka. I'm from Hualien, Taiwan. My favorite Jingzi aphorism is: If you can make good use of time, you will surely go where you want to go. This aphorism helps me to know time is the most valuable gift in life. By seeing many successful stories, I learn people who all have something in common, which is they are good at use their time, and they surely determine where they want to go. May wisdom and inspiration be with you always. Finding your inner wisdom, finding the power of the heart. The following is the teaching from Dharma Master Chen Yin on the law of karma. The Buddha came into the world to teach and guide people to awaken to life's truth. One of his most important teachings is the law of karma. Though we do not feel feel it or see it, karma governs our everyday life. Many years ago, a designer came to see me. There was a matter he was very afflicted and confused about. He used to work for a big company, and had helped this company make good profits with his designs. Since many of his designs so well. He decided to strike out on his own. After leaving the company, he designed a new product, which he felt was one of his best. But after manufacturing it and putting it on the market, the product was not well received. He ended up losing all of his savings and went into debt. What was he to do? He approached his former boss to see if the company would be interested in buying the patent from him. Knowing how good a designer this man was, the boss saw the potential in this new design. He bought the patent and started manufacturing it. The product did very well on the market and made the boss a handsome profit. It was the same product, but the outcome was entirely different. The designer could not make sense of this. He was so troubled by it that he could not eat or sleep. Why had he lost so much money while his former boss earned so much selling this very same thing? That was how the designer came to see me. I share with him the idea of karma. Whether we succeed in our endeavors depends on whether we have created positive karma and formed positively formed positive karma karmic affinities with others. If we have created a lot of negative karma and lack positive karma. Though we work hard, fortune will not be on our side. Looking around, there are people with all different kinds of fortunes. Some are born into poor families, but through their diligent efforts, they are able to pull themselves out of poor poverty. Others are caught in lives of hardship. With one misfortune after another befalling them, there are people born into wealth and prominence, but who are suddenly reduced to poverty by a sudden misfortune. There are also cases of people who go out with friends and encounter an accident that leaves them permanently disabled. Had they stayed home that day? They could have avoided the accident. Such twists and turns in life are the workings of karma. 
How our life turns out is often beyond our control, and the workings of karma are truly unfathomable. The Buddha tells us that every action we take creates karma. Positive karma is created when we do good deeds that benefit people, and when people benefit from our help. We form good affinities with them. Negative karma is created when we do harmful things, and we form bad affinities with those we affect. When we have created positive karma, it will lead to good fortune and a blessed life. Negative karma will lead to misfortune and suffering. This is a natural law. However, most of us are usually not aware of the influence of karma on our lives. The Buddha wants to teach us about the law of karma, so that we can create a better life. In our past lives, we have done numerous deeds, both good and bad. Good deeds create positive karma, and bad ones create negative karma. Together, the positive and negative karma create the ups and downs in our life. Karma means that we reap what we sow, but it is often difficult for us to understand how this plays out because different karma reaps at different times. When we create karma, we store a karmic seed in our consciousness. This seed can come to fruition in our present life, our next life, or in another future life. For example, there may be people who do bad things, but who still enjoy good fortune. It seems as if we don't experience retribution for the bad things they have done. However, Their good fortune actually comes from the positive karma they have created in their past lives. It's not that their bad deeds do not create negative karma; rather, the negative karma they are creating in this life has yet to reap and come into effect. All of us create a mix of both positive and negative karma. Both of these reap across lifetimes, and will one day bear their fruits. When our karma comes to fruition, it's impossible to avoid it. The only way that we can attempt to avoid it is to understand the law of karma and not create negative karma in the first place. Once we have planted a karmic seed, it will eventually. Bear fruit, no matter how long it lays dormant and in our consciousness. No matter how long it lays dormant in our consciousness. No matter how long it lays dormant in our consciousness. Our karma also does not ever change its characteristics. Although our negative and positive karma are mixed together in our consciousness, the positive karma will still lead to good. The negative karma, the negative, will still result in retribution. Positive karma will not give rise to retribution, nor negative karma to good fortune. Fusion will take place in time. Whether in this present life, in our next life, or in a future life, karmic seeds will not disappear. However long ago they were created, we should understand this. The time when our karma reaps may vary, but its fruition will eventually come. The Buddha wants people to realize how karma works. Positive karma begets. Begets. Positive karma begets good fortune. 
Negative karma begets misfortune. Once we understand this principle, we will know how to conduct ourselves so that our actions create positive instead of negative karma. Hello, everyone. My name is Owen Palivka. My favorite things of Forism is it feels wonderful to be loved, and feels even better to love. May wisdom and inspiration be with you always. You are listening to the power of the heart. Our special guest today is Emily Palivka, a certified Ziji volunteer who has roots in both Taiwan and the U.S. She was born in Taiwan, received her education in the U.S. After she has a family in Northern California, she decided to move back to Hualien, Taiwan, to raise her son in Ziji education system. Welcome to the program today, Emily. We're so glad to have you. Thank you, Yuru, for inviting me. First,、um, we'd like to know. Let's start from the very beginning. What brings you to Ziji? How did you meet up with Ziji? I think it's back to 1995. I just moved to Northern California in San Jose. I ran into my friend. We went to the same elementary school in Taiwan. So ever since he knew I was there,、um, he constantly informed me certain activities in Ziji at the San Jose branch. Until one day, he loaned me the Jin Si Aphorism, the book, and then it's like a a waking call. I cannot stop reading the whole book. And I remember even that day, I supposed to go to LA with my girlfriend. And I decide to let her out, and I decide to stay in the car to finish that book, because I feel all of the words make so much sense and give me all the answers I was looking for for a while. So I think that's really a trigger point for me to decided to learn more and then participate in the volunteer work. That sounds like you have a long time friend who's waiting to introduce you to Ziji and has been trying really hard. To give you all different type of words of wisdom to invite you to make you interested in Ziji, and finally he hit the right point, and you are so attracted. You even forego your vacation in order to learn more about Ziji. We see such a strong connection, strong affinity between you and Ziji. So started from there, how many years has it been since you participated in Ziji? Um, I actively. Participated in Ziji since 1999. So that's about 15 years now. Yeah, you can say that. Wow, we have a very experienced certified Ziji <laughs> volunteer here with us, and you have listened to master's teaching, and you understand that、uh, one of the key core value that master talk a lot about is the law of karma. She want us to be very clear and very careful. About the law of karma in our day-to-day -day life. So, what does law of karma mean to you? Comparing to the law of karma, I think it, it's just like the law in every country,、um, except the law in each country is visible. It's in writing, and then there's a specific consequences. For example, if you violate the law, you either pay fines or go to jail. But in Buddhism, the karma, the law of karma that Buddha tried to teach us, is invisible. Cannot touch it, cannot feel it. But I feel it's the same because bottom line, if you violate the law, you still have to pay for it. So you pay for it with suffering. You pay for it with affliction because you see the unwholesome. Thoughts or deeds, 
that you started with, and the retribution will be your own suffering. Yes, and then、um, what worse is you never know when it's gonna come <laughs> because you started the process. Yeah, and you're sure it's going to come. You just don't know when the time、exactly. will, it will come,、yeah. and when that retribution ripen, you'll be hit with it. Now, have you ever seen real life example of the law or karma at work in your life? Yes.、Um, one thing quite unforgettable is、um, I had a family member who always take more than an hour to. For 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 shower, so you can imagine how much water that person waste. And no matter how we try to let him know,、um, you don't really need to take that much time or use that much water. Especially、uh, one year, it's、um, it was drought, so everybody is try to save water, but it's hard for him to change the behavior. And many years later,、um, he got a surgery in his leg, and then I almost forgot about you know his behavior of you know taking long time of shower. But anyway, what he told me is, oh, I haven't been able to take showers for for almost a month because of the the、um, the cuts. He's so afraid to get infection, and it does. Look really bad to me. So that suddenly remind me, like, wow! No matter how much he enjoy taking shower, he just can't right now. It's like cat cannot touch water, and then that wound in his leg look really bad, and that kind of stopping him taking shower for a long time. And then that moment that that. Re- Kind of remind me the law of karma right there. So basically, if you s- saw the sea, the fruit will come, and if you waste water,、mm-hmm. you'll have to somehow pay for it later on in your life, whether you want it or not.、Mm-hmm. And hopefully, it doesn't come at such a painful cost at your own house or your own、exactly. uh, family's house. Exactly. Wow, this this is really vivid example you provide. Thank you very much. And I think、okay. a lot of people out there never thought about wasting water when they、mm-hmm. take long shower.、Mm-hmm. They simply just enjoy it. They、mm-hmm. they want to indulge in that that luxurious feeling of、uh, bathing, and they forgot about water as a precious resource. And they really need to cherish it because if we use up all these resources. What's going to happen to our future, our future generation? And it's very scary to think that if we have no water, what our life will be like. Because you only need to look to Africa; you can see people struggling on without water, and that is definitely not the direction we want to go down. That's the wrong direction.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. What would you say to people who refuse to believe in the law of karma? I'm sure there are people out there saying like, "Ah,、oh, you're just saying it. I don't believe you." Would you try to convince them if you can explain to them in some easy to understand way? Um, to be honest with you, I I don't think I ever succeed yet so far. Even though I try a couple of times, um, usually ends up just an argument or never come to agreement. And so,、um, after a while, I start to calm down myself, and then wait for the opportunities to come, or or just share my own experience without annoying other people's feelings. And then the other way is like loaning them the book, the master's book, and help them find the answers themselves. I believe in times, sooner or later, just like myself, you know the. They will wake up, <laughs> hopefully, and then、um, otherwise, is for some reason to me still very very hard to convince people for things like this. I think you you're definitely hitting on the right right pattern that we're seeing right now in our society. A lot of people don't believe in the truth, even though it is the truth. 
when you try to explain to them, they don't believe it until they suffer, and that's when the point they start crying out and seeking for answer. But that by then it's already too late, because what goes around comes around. But when you wait until that that moment of no return, you just have to suffer through the consequence. And your approach, I I totally agree with you. Wait for the right opportunity, because it is always about the right time, the right setting, and the right explanation to hit that soft spot in people's mind to really bring their wisdom, their innate pure wisdom forward for them to embrace the truth.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really hope so. Even though sometimes I, I really don't want to see they finally realize the truth. When they get sufferings, but unfortunately, it seems like most of the cases, including myself, sometimes that's how we learn in a very expensive lesson. <laughs> Thank you very much, Emily, for joining us today. We'll be listening to this book over the next several months. Please join us next time to continue our discussion on the power of the heart. If you want to read this book, we're talking about. You can find a copy of this book in any Jingzi Bookstore and Cafe, all around the world. For more teaching from Dharma Master Zheng Yan, please make sure that you tune in next time to our program. Goodbye and have a great day. For other people, the way you want them to care for you.